Good afternoon, everyone. All right, sorry to make you wait for a moment. Um, Sarah, if we can share, make sure that we're sharing the presentation. We will get ready for our webinar today. As I mentioned when I first started, my name is Evelyn Mantilla from Access Health Connecticut. And we are really glad that you're joining us for today's webinar. Um, you need to have Zoom open. The Quinta the Zoom. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful. And I see that we have new participants as well, which is terrific. All right, thank you for everyone's uh, patience. We had a couple of things we wanted to make sure that we got set and ready here. So we are ready to begin. First and foremost, thank you so much for taking the time today to participate in today's webinar. It should be a, a very interesting conversation. Let me give you a couple of housekeeping items. All participants are automatically muted once you log in, and I ask that you keep your uh, computer muted for the duration of the webinar. Also, in order to facilitate the best flow of today's webinar, we are going to reserve questions for the end of the webinar. I encourage you to type any questions you may have into the chat box, which is located in the control panel, and the presenter or uh, myself will answer your questions. Also, if you find that your audio component is experiencing any technical difficulties or you wish to call in instead, please switch from audio to phone call in the control panel. You will be given the phone number and access code to dial in and listen to the webinar. So again, thank you. Welcome to everyone. We can go to the first slide today. Our presentation today is on the 2019 Standalone Dental Plans and Enrollment Overview. I am happy to introduce to you today our two main presenters. Uh, we have Ann Lopes, who is a Carrier Product Manager here at Access Health Connecticut, and Katrina Davis, who is a Business Process Specialist for Shop and Dental. So with this in mind, I'm going to hand it over to Ann, and, and you will begin our presentation, and we will move the slides for you as we move along, okay? Great, thank you, Evelyn. Uh, and this is just a highlight of our agenda. I'll be handling the first topic, which is the, just the individual plan designs, and then Katrina will uh, handle the last five topics, last four topics. Next. Next. So um, some of you may have attended a webinar that was held on October 22nd. So what I'm about to present to you on this slide and the subsequent slide is uh, basically was also presented uh, at, on that October 22nd uh, presentation. We wanted to provide a specific overview of the standalone dental plan options and the enrollee cost sharing that is available th uh, through Access Health CT in the individual market. Uh, the slide right here will give you the, uh, an overview of each of the three different plan designs that are available. Uh, and federal regulations specify requirements of an uh, ACA compliant standalone dental plan. Uh, these requirements pertain only to pediatric dental benefits for children under age 19. So whenever you see in these plans an adult uh, benefit uh, illustrated, there are no ACA specific requirements pertaining to adult dental. Each of these plans is compliant with federal regulations to be offered on the exchange because they include the in-network out-of-pocket maximum of $350 for one child and $700 for two or more children in a family. They also include the required essential health benefits for a dental plan in Connecticut, and they do not include any plan maximums for children under age 19. There have been no changes in the standalone dental plan carrier, which is Anthem, or the plan designs offered through Access Health CT for 2019. The plan features and the associated cost sharing for these is displayed on the slide. Uh, one, one thing to note, 
of these three plans. The last plan, the Anthem Dental Family Value Plan, does not include coverage for major services for adults. Uh, detailed plan documents is, um, are available as you work through our, uh, our website. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of each of the plan designs here because you'll be getting this presentation uh, later. And this just, again, just, just summarizes the in-network plan features that are uh, available. Um, next slide. This chart simply shows the premium for the 2019 plans for each of the three standalone dental plans that are offered through Access Health. The rates are the same statewide for children and also for adults, and those are listed here. Uh, there's also uh, the last row indicates whether there was any change in the rates compared to 2018. Uh, compared to 2018. And as you see, for the first plan, which is the Anthem Dental Family Enhanced Plan, there has been no change in either the adult or the child rate. In the second two plans, the Anthem Dental Family and the Anthem Dental Family Value Plan, the adult rate went down by approximately 10%. And that uh, adult rate applies to any enrollee age 19 or over. Um, and that is uh, essentially the overview of the dental plan options and the premiums for 2019. So I'll be turning this over to Katrina. All right, Katrina, thank you so much. And um, we're gonna get you started with the rest of the presentation. So welcome. Thank you. So I will just be going, taking a, a quick overview of our enrollment process for our standalone dental product. Um, next slide, please. So uh, first, let's get started. Uh, our contact information here is, our website is dental.accesshealthct.com. To contact uh, dent anybody regarding dental, you can email dental.hct.gov or call our call center um, and select option four for dental. Uh, our standalone dental product does not require a specific certification to sell. Uh, to, request, to request access to our, to our system, all you have to do is email dental.hct at ct.gov and request access to our system to sell the product. Uh, as Anne had mentioned, we currently have uh, one carrier. It's uh, with Anthem. And in order to sell our dental product, you just have to be appointed with Anthem. So to jump into our anonymous browsing, just like our individual medical uh, shopping option, you can you can go into anonymous browsing. You go to our site dental.ht. Uh, sorry, excuse me, dental.accesshealthct.com, and click get started. So here you would just en enter uh, general information, a name, a uh, zip code of where of the residents, effective date if they have a, a qualifying event. Uh, if it's during open enrollment, the effective date will be um, January 1st. And the date of birth, next slide. you can also add dependents uh, by clicking uh, uh, add a child or add a spouse. And you would put their demographic information in here. Then you would, it would generate a quote which looks like this. Um, if, if you wanted to, if the member knew they wanted to apply, they could just click apply and jump right into the application, which is coming up next. Uh, just one thing to note on this, you can also, there's a, a button to comp compare these uh, different plans. Um, and this, this site, uh, this, I'm sorry, this page looks identical to our, the end of our plan selection in our application as well. So you should see no difference between, other than it says, instead of saying apply, it says select. So there is no difference between this page and our plan selection, selection page at the end of the application process. So to begin our application process, you would, this is the first page, uh, our disclaimer. The disclaimer just says that Access Health Connecticut owns and operates the, the site. So once you agree, uh, agree to the terms of the disclaimer, you would hit next and continue uh, on to uh, next slide, please. Uh, the special enrollment period reason. So this will show during uh, all enrollment, including open enrollment. Uh, during open enrollment, you can click you can select none and it will give you a January 1st date, but if they do have a special enrollment period, you can select from the options here and enter when, the, when it occurred. 
and then that would generate the uh, effective date from there. The next slide is our primary contact. Um, it's important to note here that the, unlike our individual medical uh, enrollment process, only those who are requesting coverage should be on the application. So in this case, if uh, a family of five and only three people wanted dental coverage, only those three people should be on this application. This primary contact um, is essentially the primary applicant, so similar to our individual medical side. Uh, every uh, that you would add your, their home address or mailing address, their email, home phone number, alternate phone number. An important thing to note is everything with a blue bar next to it is a required field. If in the event the person is buying insurance for a dependent or is a spouse and, and wants to, uh, ha to have information on, on the uh, application, they would fill out this. This is essentially just like our individual medical. This is uh, more, more or less like the authorized rep. This is where you would fill out that information. So the broker information. So in order to be uh, connected to your client, you will have to fill this out uh, and then actually click on uh, your name and add yourself to the client. So this will actually allow, this will uh, add this client to your portal and allow you to go into their account from your broker portal on our dental site. If this member has any dependents, you just click add dependent and then add the dependent here. The address will uh, auto fill if from, from the primary contacts information. If it's different, you can change it. Uh, it will, it, the rating will be based on the primary applicants area. And then you add the dependent, click next. And like I said, these screens should be identical to the anonymous browsing screens and it will say select, um, flip the plan. So once you select the plan, uh, you would just continue and submit the application. Once the application is submitted, it goes through what we call a workflow. So it does take a little bit more time for the application to show up on, on as a consumer account, but and also on the broker account. Uh, once it shows up on, on your broker account, you can click into that account um, and then it would look it would look something like this. So this is an actual screen from a, a consumer a, a, a fake consumer account, but this is a consumer account and this is everything that you as a broker or the consumer would be able to do. The only thing you should not be able to do um, is terminate the coverage. If you have to terminate coverage for a dental uh, enrollee, you would call the call center uh, to terminate that coverage. And that's all I have. All right, terrific. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katrina and Anne. Uh, at this time, we would love to uh, field some of your questions. And for anyone who is participating on the webinar, uh, in the chat box, please feel free to type in any questions you may have. Uh, we did receive a question earlier, actually, um, that I thought was interesting, and the question goes like this. Are there any certification requirements to sell dental plans offered through the exchange? Um, there are currently not. So the only requirements that you have to have to, to sell on uh, our dental product is just to be appointed with the carrier. There's not a certification process like there is on the individual level. So okay, so to be appointed to the carrier, but not a certification process. Yep. Excellent. They, they would just have to, a broker would just have to contact the, the dental.acc at cc.gov email mm -hmm. and request access to be able to sell the product. Right, beautiful. Okay, and I actually have uh, a question myself. Uh, it's a very simple one, though. Can the consumer themselves go through this process and, and purchase their own insurance? Yep, absolutely. So they can, they can create an account on our dental site and go through the application, which, it, which is identical to the one that I just showed. Mm -hmm. um, there's no difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Are there any specific qualifications, age-wise and so forth? I'm particularly thinking of the Medicaid population, not Medicaid, Medicare. Medicare. Can someone in Medicare um, come on and, and purchase a, an individual? policy for dental? Yes, so who is enrolled in Medicare can purchase an individual dental policy through Act Health. Mm -hmm. so there, are no, there, are, there are very minimal eligibility requirements for, for individual dental. Um, anybody who wants it can, essentially anybody who wants it can come in and mm -hmm. buy it. Great, great. And this is a, a sort of a straight purchase of an individual product. There are no, there is no financial assistance uh, that comes with it, but it's a product that offered offered here through Access Health Connecticut. Correct. Yep. 
Terrific, terrific. All right, um, anyone that may have any questions, please feel free to let us know. Use the chat box to type it in and we'll make sure that we answer your question. Um, uh, otherwise, in the meantime, if, you know, if there are any other details uh, that we may want to show. There is one question. Um, someone's asking, how do we sign in on the Access Health Connecticut website? Oh, here's a question. How do we sign in to the Access Health Connecticut website? For individual dental? I'm assuming it's for individual dental. All right, let's check that out. If, if there's a, is there a sign-in process? Yeah, there is a sign-in process. So if you don't mind, go back to... Uh, sure, we'll go to the correct slide. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, the first piece of the anonymous. Mm -hmm. Yep, right here. Okay, oh, so here this is what it would look like. This is a uh, this is actually the consumer sign-in page, but the broker sign-in page looks very similar to this. Uh, the broker would have a username. Uh, they would have they they have a second uh, I'm sorry a third requirement of their license number and a password to be able to sign in. So unlike the consumer, the broker has to, the broker has to actually request that access through our our dental email. Um, and then once once they're in, they're they're good to go and they can start selling through that. Through okay. That. Great, so let's take the opportunity and share what that dental email is. Dental.hct at ct.gov. Dental.hct at ct.gov. Ct .gov. Excellent. All right, terrific. Yes, Anne. Um, one question that, uh, if you can actually go back to the plan design slide, it's fairly close to the beginning, to the beginning. of the presentation, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. That's it right there. Whoops, one more, one. forward. One more forward. One more. There you go. Uh, one item that I did just want to touch on a little bit more since we seem to have a little bit of time is the value that you would be able to obtain through one of these particular uh, plans. So in the Anthem Dental Family Enhanced Plan, uh, that particular plan design has a plan maximum per adult of $2,000. Because for children, there is no plan maximum that is applied to any of these plans. As I mentioned earlier, in order to be ACA compliant, a plan maximum cannot exist for children under age 19 per uh, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, so the dental family enhanced plan, again, has a $2,000 maximum. Now, these plans typically do have a waiting period for adults. A waiting period does not apply to children. And once again, as we talked about earlier, there is a $350 out of pocket max for one child or $700 family uh, maximum for, a, uh, for two or more children in the family. That's an extremely rich benefit for children if you were to be shopping for plans that are offered off of the exchange that are not ACA compliant, you would not be finding that particular plan feature anywhere. So the, the benefit for someone, let's just say there is a, a, a child in the family who does um, need medically necessary orthodontia. Uh, in that particular instance, that child would pay the $60 deductible under the Anthem Dental Family Plan, and then 50% after the deductible for the coverage up to the $350 maximum. So typically orthodontia services occurs over a number of years, maybe it's two years or in some certain situations, it might be three years. But for a family, uh, that particular family would be paying potentially $350 for year one for that orthodontia, $350 for year two, and in the situation where year three uh, also necessitated orthodontia services, no more than $350 in that third year. Uh, the other two plans are fairly close in design to the an Anthem Dental Family Enhanced Plan for children. A difference would be the deductible is a little bit uh, less, and then the um, coinsurance, I'm sorry, for the diagnostic and preventive services, the deductible must be paid before, uh, uh, before the cost sharing of 0% would be applied for that uh, child or an adult. 
one other item just to uh, speak to is that the plan maximum for the adult for the dental family and the dental family value are $1,000. So we just move forward to the um, uh, premium slide, if we can just go back to that quickly. Uh, sometimes we do get feedback that the uh, price tag on these plans are um, you know, high relative to what's available in the uh, uh, open market. And I can tell you that right now, we are reviewing that again for uh, 20, uh, 19. However, uh, some of the plans that were filed with the insurance department have not yet been marketed, uh, and also some of the rate increases that were recently approved uh, by the insurance department have not yet gotten out onto the public websites. Uh, as an example, I think um, MetLife and Golden Rule, uh, I'm sorry, MetLife and Renaissance both went in with rate increases and got approvals in October for um, about a five to four to six percent increase roughly on their plans. But the bottom line here is that for children, again, the value that you're seeing in this premium is representative of that $350 out of pocket max per child. Uh, with regards to the adults, uh, what we are seeing is that there is a little bit of an increased appetite uh, uh, for off exchange plans in going to a slightly increased um, plan max. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, an annual cap on the coverage for the services. So while the Anthem Dental Family Enhanced Plan has a $2,000 maximum for adults and the other two plans have a 1,000, we are seeing um, market-wide a little bit of an increase. Uh, one carrier has at least a $3,000 uh, out-of-pocket max that they're offering. But when you start looking at the premium for those plans, they are um, starting to go up uh, and our adult plan rates are uh, looking to be fairly competitive against what's available out in the open market. Great, thank you. Thank you, Anne. We have another question that we want to consider uh, that uh, came in from uh, W.F. Malloy, as I see you identify here. What is different from the pediatrician dental? Pedi pediatric dental included in medical. That's an excellent question. Yes. So the major difference for the pediatric dental that is included in the medical plans is number one. The, most of the services for that plan are subject to the plan deductible that would apply. So if there's a plan out there with a medical deductible of let's just say $4,000, most of the services under uh, the pediatric dental coverage in that medical plan would be subject to that uh, high deductible compared to the deductibles that you get under the standalone dental plan. The other major difference is that the out-of-pocket max that applies for the medical plan could be as high as $7,900 uh, per individual in 2019. And again, for these plans, we're talking about a $350 per individual child or 700 for two or more children per family. And again, um, the, the point uh, is very well taken is that there could be, technically speaking, some duplication of coverage uh, per se if a family bought the medical plan with pediatric dental and this plan, but there is um, you know, no cross application of the uh, cost sharing. They're all, they're uh, completely and totally separate. So in theory, the uh, plan, uh, uh, the provider could submit for both plans. Uh, and you know, if, if someone bought both plans, they, they could get coverage under both. Great, thank you. Thank you, Anne. Any, does anyone else have any other questions that you want us to consider? I'm really happy that we you know, have been able to provide this important information to all of you as participants. And uh, you know, I want to not just thank you for your time, but you know, for your efforts to participate in our webinars to get the most uh, education on the Access Health Connecticut products as possible. And I want to have a special thank you for Katrina and Anne, of course, to, uh, for having pulled together this information and being our presenters today. Uh, seeing no other questions, I think that uh, we've had a, a, a good conversation here and uh, we can close today's webinar. 
Oh, there's one more question coming in. I love it. Thank you. Um, so the question is, if I send an email to Access Health for credentials, how long will it take to get? All right. If I send the emails to Access Health Connect an email to Access Health Connecticut for credentials, how long before we get back? Uh, pretty quickly, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I won't put a time frame on, but uh -huh. definitely same day, hopefully. Right. So the expectation would be, for the most part, same day. Probably Otherwise, so. still rather quickly. So. Rather quickly, yeah. Excellent. So as soon as I can get to All it. right. <laughs> Great. So, Katrina, you're, no, you're on that <laughs> one. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Any other questions come through? I don't have any. I haven't seen any others in the chat right. box. Okay, very good. With that, then I'll thank everybody again. Thank you on behalf of Access Health Connecticut. We really appreciate your time and your effort. Uh, and stay in touch. Know that we are going to make this information available to everyone. And so uh, as we offer these webinars uh, once a month or so, uh, I really encourage you to look for the information and join us as we present different topics of interest to everyone. There is one more question from um, this uh Malloy on here about compensation. 10%. Uh huh. So there's a question about, thank you. They keep coming in, so I appreciate it. So the question is about compensation. For commissions. So yeah, um, Anthem pays all the commissions for the uh, dental product. From my last understanding, it was 10%. Yeah. All right. Very good. Great. All right. Let's close the webinar. Thank you so much. And we look forward to uh, having you join us at the next one. Thank you. Uh, I had Alan check it. Good job. Oh, excellent. Good.